Welcome, my beautiful believers. Welcome to this um, session of Boot Camp to Beautiful. I'm walking you on a 90 day journey from brokenness to beautiful in the sanctification of your heart. And here we are in the center where we're talking about an act of, of for, uh, the act of forgiveness and the act of communion. And I, this is God breathing his life into the broken body of Christ. And let's go to prayer. Father, I thank you for your act of love. I thank you that you sent Jesus as an act of life of love to rescue and redeem us. We thank you, God, for your sacrifice. We thank you, God, for this gift that was given as an act of love for everyone living broken. Thank you for the healing heart of heaven. I pray, Father, that today, today during this teaching, we would learn how how to walk in forgiveness and how to actually honor you in the act of communion today. We pray, Father, that you would just release your love into the broken body of Christ and that they would hear the healing heart of heaven, that they would, we would, they would believe the truth and of the word of God and that they would receive the truth of the word of God today. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. An act of love. Words are never spoken, suffered silent shame, given up for you and me, body crushed within the pain. His heart of love was broken, rejected by his friends. His mouth was never open, abandoned in the end. Purchased for a price, he paid for you and me. He sacrificed himself in love and hung upon a tree. Suffered without sinning, the righteous son of God. He lost all without winning. To serve a greater cause, crushed before his father, no greater cross to bear. Broken for his brothers to bring restoration there chose to bear brokenness, to rescue from above, to save us from our helplessness. No greater act of love. Thank you, Jesus. The act of forgiveness, the act of communion, the beautiful entering brokenness, God breathing life into the broken. Healing communion will be served. So get your elements ready and Prepare your heart to take with us. First John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us all from all unrighteousness. The act of forgiveness, we are told that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us with this forgiveness, we are cleansed. We are spiritually washed by the blood of Jesus from all unrighteousness. That is the sin that lives within. I've taught about when God our Father sees us through the sacrificial blood of his son, Jesus Christ, we are made clean. It is through our act, the act of our confession that God's forgiveness is applied to our hearts and to our lives. The word forgive comes from the Greek word aphemi, which means to send away or to release. Forgiveness is the act of releasing offenses, trespasses, hurts, and debts. There is an inseparable, inseparable relationship between healing and the act of forgiveness. In fact, there's a healing dimension to the act of forgiveness. Though God has judicially pardoned us in Christ as his spiritual children within his body of believers, he now holds us accountable to walk in love as he does and to forgive as he forgives. Matthew 
18, 21, and 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but unto, until seventy times seven forgive. Seventy times seven, that's 490 times, which amounts to every three minutes in a, within a 24 hour day. Jesus continues on by sharing this parable, Matthew 18, 30, 23 through 35. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants and when he had begun to reckon, one of them brought was unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But as mu for as much as he could not pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him 100 pence. And he laid, him, laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when the fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry. And they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that they had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive gave thee all that debt because thou desirest me, that shouldn't not thou have also had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay what was due him unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts Forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. If we show mercy, we will receive mercy, though God has judicially pardoned us in Christ as his spiritual children within the body of Christ. He now holds us accountable to walk in love as he loves and to forgive as he forgives. Matthew 5, 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Mark 11, 24 through 26, say, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But... If ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. The Bible clearly says when we, are st when we stand praying, we are told to forgive. In this particular scripture, it says that our prayers will be answered and we can believe we will, will receive what we ask when we are praying from an obedient and forgiving heart when we are not walking in forgiveness, when we are harboring unforgiveness in our hearts, our prayers, will, our own prayers will be hindered. Not only will our prayers be hindered, but, but our healing will be hindered. When we stand in judgment of others and don't release them, the Lord will stand in judgment of us for our own sins of unforgiveness. It is a spiritual bondage which hinders our own spiritual freedom. When we go before God with our gifts, our sacrifices of praise and our worship, or when we come before God and petition to him and petition him in prayer, we are told to 
first be reconciled with our brothers and sisters in Christ before we come to him. This is the spiritual law. We are reaping the fruit of spiritual seeds of unforgiveness in our heart. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come offer thy gift. The word reconcile, according to the dictionary, means to restore friendly relations with with restore harmony make peaceful patch up to make harmonious to settle a disagreement to resolve differences between the act of faith expressed in love faith works by love galatians 5 6 says this for in jesus christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith worketh by love in the NIV, it says it this way. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself in love. Our faith in God is expressed to God and to others by the love we have for one another. Let me say that again. Our faith is expressed in God, is expressed to God and to others by the love we have for one another. God has loved us even in our sin and has shown us that uh, that love by sending his son to die for us, to reconcile each one of us to himself through an act of forgiveness. This act of love is now our mandate as his children, as his be beautiful believers. The command that Jesus gave at the Last Supper was this. In the English word was mandi, comes from the Latin mandatum, which means commandment, as recorded in John's gospel on the last night before his betrayal and arrest. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples and then gave them a new commandment to love one another as he had loved them. John 13, 34 through 35, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. We are to love one another as God loves, by the power of God, through the Spirit of God, as children of God. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. So this now is our new commandment, the new commandment of the new covenant which was given at the Last Supper, which Christ has now fulfilled at the cross. The cup is the blood that was shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins and the bread that was broken for his broken body, which included his stripes, the stripes for our healing. Psalm 27, 8 says, When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Healing begins by walking in obedience, which is love. If healing begins by walking in obedience, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for you? Now, right now, today, my beautiful believer, let me take you on a walk in the Word and work to see what the God of the Word says. First Peter 2.2 2 says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow there, thereby. Obedience is love in action. Exodus 15, 26 tells us, and said that if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do all that is right in, in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. This is the promise of God's blessings of obedience to the Israelites, God's children through the covenant, through the old covenant. 
The blessing of obedience includes God's healing and the removal of all sickness and disease. In the New Testament, we are given a new covenant of love in Matthew 22, 34 through 40. As Jesus answers the question, which is the greatest commandment? Matthew 22 through 34, oh, 22, 34 through 40. But when the Pharisees said, had heard that he had put the Sanhedrins to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and was saying, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment of the law? Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like a to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus is saying that if we do this, we are fulfilling the law. Children of God are to obey, are to love and obey. In the book of 1 John, we are addressed as children of God. And John is discussing both love and obedience in detail as our mission as those children of God, as those beautiful believers. First John 3, 1 says, Behold, what matter of what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. First John 3, 18 through 19. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth, and whereby ye know that we are the truth, they and shall assure our hearts before him. When God convicts us of the sin that lives within, we feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. When we feel our hearts condemn us, we know we must be walking in disobedience in some area of our life. The gentle conviction in our hearts is godly sorrow, leading us, leading our hearts to repentance. First John 3, 21 through 24. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask of him, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth, or do, his commandment dwelleth, dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us, by the Spirit which He hath given us. First John 4 set, continues through 7 and verse, verses 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not God, knoweth not. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Where herein in is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time, if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Obedience is love in action in the New Testament. Loving one another is how God's people, is God loving one another, is how God's love is made complete in us. Loving one another is how we answer the prayer to fulfill God's purposes and, and establish his kingdom in the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
we are witnesses of God's love by our love. First John 4, 13 through 16 says, Hereby know that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son to be the sa Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we know that God, and, and we know and believe the love that God hath to us. Just now, first John, this is that was 13 through 16. This is first John 4, 16 through 19. And so we know and rely on the love God hath for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath the torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He, we love him because he first loved us. The antidote to fear is God's perfect love. First John 4, 19 says we love him because he first loved us. And this continues on. First John for 20 through 21, if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath, how, okay, who he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. My beautiful friends, do you know what this is talking about? This is talking about restored relationship. This is talking about forgiveness. This is talking about loving your enemy. Walking in love allows us to be in a right relationship first with God, then with each other. I was so convicted in my heart of hating my brother and my heart my ex-husband, my offender, my enemy, was first God's child and my brother in Christ. He was my brother as a believer. He was God's beautiful believer first. He was God's child first. And by the witness of the Holy Spirit, my heart condemned me. I was walking in sin and I was sinning against God being out of right relationship, being in a broken relationship with another believer, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, causes, causes us to be out of right relationship with God. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he's a liar. I was a liar. Uh, obedience is love in action in the Old Testament. Let me walk you through Isaiah 68, 58. Isaiah 58. This is written by the prophet Isaiah to God's children. Verses 1 through 5 are God showing, God showing the people their hearts. The second set of verses, 6 through 11, are God showing us what pleases his heart, what pleases the heart of heaven. Listen, my beautiful one, Isaiah 58, one through five. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy whole voice like a trumpet and show thy, my people their transgressions, the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. And they asked me, they take delight in approaching God, wherefore we have fasted, they say, and thou hast not seen, thou hast seen us not, wherefore we have afflicted our souls, and thou hast taken no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast you, you find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and 
to smite with a fist of wickedness, you shall not fast as you do this day and make your to make your voice heard on high. Is it this such a fast that, that I have chosen, the day for a man to afflict his soul and to bow down his head in a, as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? This, God's children, this is God's children approaching God with a fast, seeking God and yet not honoring him in righteousness, but in strife and in wickedness and debate, the smiting of fists, hitting their brothers with fists. Now God describes what is acceptable and what pleases his heart. We see the heart of heaven here, Isaiah 58, 6 through 11. Is not this the fast I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that he break every yoke. Let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke. Loose the bands of wickedness. As, verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and thou shalt bring thy poor that are cast out to the house, and when thou seest the naked, thou cover him, and hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou God, shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou will take away the, from the midst of you the yoke and putting forth of the finger. And if you stop pointing fingers at each other and, and speaking vanity, if you draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, thou shalt your light shall rise in obscurity, and thy darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord answers our prayers when we start walking in obedience, when we seek Him first, when we are doing evil in our hearts, when we are not doing evil to our brothers. This is God's description of loving one another, that and thou draw thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then thy light shall rise in obscurity and thy darkness shall be as noonday and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and and thou shalt be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters never fail this is God's description when we walk in love, thy light shall break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Your healing will quickly appear, and your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your reward. Obedience to love and action brings the blessing of God. This is God's blessing that comes immediately when we walk in love and our hearts do not condemn us. God's ears are opened to our prayers and our healing will quickly appear. He will strengthen our bodies and heal our broken bones. Amen. Like mine, all my miracles of healing in my life have been a blessing of God. We will be like a well-watered garden, flourishing life and shining his glory his glory will be our rear guard, right? And we will be like a spring full of living water. This is God's promise to all his children. This is God, God's promise to every beautiful believer. This is God's promise to you. When we are in a right relationship, loving God, ourselves and others, the blessing of God are immediate. 
the blessings of God are immediate. Isaiah 58, 8 says, Then thy light shall break forth as the morning in thine help shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. And Isaiah, Isaiah in the NIV 58, 8 says, Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. But our hearts do not condemn us. We walk in repentance, forgiveness, and love. We become his beautiful believer. I love this scripture, Isaiah 55, 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let it return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon when we are loving God, others, and ourselves, and be, we are being doers of the word, obedient to God's command to love. We are fulfilling the law of God. When we are fulfilling the law of God, God fulfills his promises to us. It's this simple. America, uh, like, so uh, we, we become the manifestation of heaven's heart here. We become the promise fulfilled. We become the miracle fulfilled. We become, become the healing fulfilled. We become the healing of the cancer fulfilled. We become walking in righteousness and holiness and the blessings. This um, I'm walking. This ranch is part of the blessing of the beautiful. I mean, we are in right relationship with the Lord. God covers us, and Jesus heals us, and and His blessings overflow us, out of us, like living waters. Our righteousness is His morning glory. Our His the glory of the Lord is upon us. The glory of the Lord is evident in us. We become the manifestation of the promise. Jeremiah, we become the promise fulfilled. fulfilled. Jeremiah 17, 14 and 15 says, Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. They keep saying to me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it now be fulfilled. Let it now be fulfilled. Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. In Jesus' name. Prayer. Here's a prayer. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace, to help in time of need. Forgive us, Lord, for whatever our hearts, wherever our hearts have condemned us, for the sin that we have walked in. Forgive us, Lord, for sinning against you. Forgive us as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Help us to walk in obedience. Help us to walk in love. Thank you, Father, for the healing heart of heaven. Thank you, Father, for the healing power that is touching the heart, mind, and body of every beautiful believer living broken right now. In Jesus' name, let it now be fulfilled. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's talk about the act of communion. There's a scripture that I need to elaborate on and concerning this teaching, concerning um, dis discerning the Lord's body. And um, we're talking about the elements of communion and what they represent or don't represent and how to judge ourselves appropriate, appropriately before taking partaking in this sacrament. Part of the sacrament includes not just walking, in forgiveness, but believing in the healing word, work of Christ on the cross. 
I'm teaching on this scripture specific, specifically because this boot camp to beautiful is talking about healing. It's a healing journey from brokenness to beautiful. And I'm teaching you spiritual issues of the heart that cause us to walk in rebellion, that cause us to not heal, to cause the broken body of Christ to be lit at dying prematurely and bearing and well which isn't which isn't good it's, it's it's not the Lord's heart for us to die prematurely and to be sick with sick, sickness and disease in our bodies First Corinthians I'm this is the scripture First Corinthians 11 27 through 31 Wherefore, whatsoever, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of this bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. First Corinthians 11, 30 says, For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. This is, sleep is death. It, it is the Lord's body that we must discern. It is by his stripes that we were healed. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Matthew 8, 17 says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Esaias the prophet, saying he himself took our infirmity, infirmities and bare our sicknesses. 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bare our sins on his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live under righteousness. By his stripes he were healed. As I have said before, there is healing. There is a healing dimension to the act of forgiveness. If we don't want to be sickly and to die prematurely, we have to must have faith in the healing provided by Jesus Christ on the cross, as well as forgiveness, healing. Hebrews thirteen eight says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Matthew 21, 22 says, And all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing he shall receive. And Jesus said, Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. All him, all things are possible, the miracles, healing, in the atonement. Jesus did this for us. So, and for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to unto this mountain move, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt, doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye so do desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have any ought against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. John 14. 12 through 15, verily and verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, 
he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whosoever ye shall ask in my name, so that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he ask anything in my name, I will do it. If he love me, keep my commandments. What are the commandments? To love one another. John 16, 24 says, Hitherto I have no, asked nothing in my name, and ye shall receive it, that your joy may be full. The scripture in 1 Corinthians 11 is talking about taking communion in unbelief, not realizing the true significance and not discerning the Lord's body and blood in order to receive the benefits by faith. It also refers to the saved or unsaved man or woman who takes communion with sin in his life or her life without making confession unto salvation and acknowledging personal needs and without judging him or herself so as to escape the chastening of God. 1 Corinthians 11 27 through 21. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the blood of the body and blood of the Lord. For if a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Here's the first point. Aspect one. When you take communion, it is one of, of the sacraments of the church. There are only three of them. Water baptism, communion, and foot washing. There are these only three sacraments are found in scripture as commandments in communion. We are celebrating the remembrance of Christ in two dimensions, his shed blood and his broken body. The cup for the blood, the cup for the blood and the wafer, bread or cracker for his broken body. When we unworthily partake of what forgiveness of what forgiveness by God represents in communion and do not repent unto him. This is partaking unworthily. You have cursed yourself with a curse because you have made what Jesus did at the cross of no effect for you. It is not and it is not the sacrament that saves you. It's the obedience Part of this aspect is not judging ourselves. It, it is regard to sin as the spiritual roots of disease as we judge ourselves bring and we bring forth repentance. So the forgiveness, deliverance and healing can be appropriated and bring forth the full benefits provided by the Lord's Supper. Judging ourselves involves having the discernment to know specifically what is being repented for. I'm going to walk you through all these things in later sessions of what it is, the spiritual issues of our own hearts. When I was, when I was convicted of the sin by the Lord, of the sin that lives within, of my own, of the unforgiveness in my heart, and of the of hating my brother in my heart. I had, um, and, uh, and also for me, I was battling cancer, and the Lord showed me that I was spiritually sick first, and it was because of a root of bitterness was in my heart, and it opened the door to the spiritual fruit of a, of a disease of breast cancer. And so, here, when I repented for the sin of unforgiveness, and I, when I asked my ex-husband to forgive me, and I covered, I, 
I repented for the unforgiveness in my heart and for the bitterness in my heart against him. When I was battling cancer and I went through the treatment and I did everything the doctors told me to do, but unforgiveness is the number one block to healing. And the Lord revealed to me that during this time that I had had re rebellion in my heart for years, years. If I, if I was married seven, 17 and a half years, there was probably, and the abuse started then, early, that there was all those years of going to God, taking communion unworthily, and with unforgiveness in my heart, with hatred in my heart toward my, toward my husband. I didn't hate him the whole time. But, but I hated myself. And when we drank unworthily, and I'm going and giving my gifts to the Lord, and I'm taking communion, and I'm asking in prayer to be healed, and I'm going before God, and I've got, and I'm hating, and I'm hating myself in my heart. That's a sin against the Lord because it, because he created me perfectly and he wants me to, to love myself. It's a command, love God, yourself, and others, right? Um, so I was out of right relationship and, and God's purposes for my life. And I had to submit to God's purposes for my life, in my life, before God could set me free. And out of that, that circumstance, out of that place. And then he brought new love in my life and a new, and a new husband. And, and yet I still had unforgiveness and bitterness in my heart. And over years, over years, I committed sin against God. And I took communion unworthily at the the bread and the cup, the bread and the cup. I'm sinning against God. And many of us don't understand that we've, or we don't believe it, we don't even teach that it has to do with healing. It's just, but it's, we don't, we haven't believed in that there's healing in the atonement and we haven't spoken when we're teaching and taking communion, we're not receiving this for the broken body of Christ. By his stripes, we are healed. We are, haven't received, we haven't received the healing through the sacrament. And that's a sin. People don't teach that. Nobody teaches this. And I'm, I got to, but I, you know, Every person, I mean, it's, we can, we can take our own communion. It's not a sin. You don't have to be a leader of the church. You don't have to be a pastor. You can actually sit before the Lord and take communion. You can take it every week. You can take it every day for the healing of your body because it's this promise. And he says, do this in remembrance of me. We as long as we don't do it unworthily. So that is, was my, that was my testimony. And when, when I repented of the bitterness and unforgiveness in my heart, that God healed the cancer. There was no, the, there was no more hold for the, there was no more open door for the devil for the there was no more root of bitterness for the fruit of cancer and so so I, I was healed and now I don't and and this is the truth this is for all of us this is for every person who has has battled cancer or disease in their lives like me Huntington's disease. Got it. By his stripes, we are healed. 
By his stripes I am healed. And we have authority over all the power of the enemy, over every symptom of every sickness and every disease. And we can take this and receive our healing through the sacrament of communion, if we believe. But if you don't believe, you will not, if you're cutting off, you're cutting off the healing heart of heaven through your own unbelief. If you don't believe in the healing heart of heaven, then you won't, you won't be healed of cancer, of whatever disease you're battling. If you don't believe that God can heal you, that God is greater than a disease that's in your family trees like Huntington's, if if you don't believe that, and if you say that by his stripes we are healed, he's already done that. It's a finished work on the cross. But nobody teaches this in our churches. And so but but some some do, but we haven't heard it, and so so we're so many are sick in our bodies because we're a broken body of Christ. So here, here's another one. aspect too. This aspect has to do with us eating each other alive. This is not discerning the Lord's body. In fact, it creates what. We, we might call an autoimmune disease in the church body, in the body of Christ. This is the body of believers attacking one another in relationships in a like manner as an autoimmune disease attacks the physical body. We, the church is called the body of Christ. And we must learn to discern one another as part of our body. First Corinthians 12, 27. <clears throat> now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Galatians 6, to bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. This aspect has to do with fellowship and relationship with one another in the church. If you say that you love the Lord and yet you hate your brother, the love of God is not in you. First John 3.14, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. For he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Or cursing bring a curse upon ourselves, right? When we partake, when we partake of the Lord's Supper in remembrance of him, we are saying to him that because of what he, Jesus, did for us, we are ready to do this for each other, not dying for each other's sins, but the laying of our lives down in service to one another. When we partake of communion and ignore our brother and sister, in his need and in his disease, then we have negated the fellowship, which is which communion represents, and are cursed with the curse. Communion is koinonia, number twenty-eight forty-two in Greek in the Greek Strong's Concordance. Our fellowship, we must focus on the. Okay, let me say this again. Communion is koinonia in the concordance or fellowship. We must focus on the horizontal relationship in the body of Christ, which is our relationship with each other, as well as on our vertical relationship with each of the three persons of the Godhead, right? The Holy Spirit, the Father, and Jesus as the Son, right? Jesus, the living word, the Father God, and the Holy Spirit. We have to, in a right relationship with all three of those, right? With each of the persons of the Godhead, 1 Corinthians 10, 
16 and 17, the cup of blessing which we bless is not, is not the communion of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, being many, are one bread and one body, for we all are partakers of that one, one bread, the one bread, the one body of Christ. All of us who are Christians, all of us, brothers and sisters of Christ, we are part of that one body, one body, and yet we're hating each other in our hearts, and we're accusing, and we're living, hating those that are different, hating those that we don't know, hating those that are, but it's, we're one body. We're one body, it's Christ. And this is what God is gonna do. He is going to show, show us how to love. love. He's gonna show you how to love your enemy. He's also gonna teach you how to separate that sin and walk in forgiveness so that you can be healed in your body and so that you can receive all the blessings that are that God has prepared for you beforehand, before the foundation of the world. If we first John, okay, the cup. First John 1 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. The cup, the blood, is for the forgiveness of sins on the vertical level from God and on the horizontal level with each other. The bread is the bread of life, the healing of our bodies through helping the hurting, helping one another with the spiritual issues, reaching out or reaching into the broken body of believers, the healing of our hearts and the healing of our relationships. This, it is the, the church being the church, which is what we're supposed to be doing. Wait, this is the church being the church and ministering the life of God to each other. Then we can truly say, Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Aspect of three of this, of the, of the block to healing. The third aspect of this block taught in 1 Corinthians 11 is even more serious. It is addressed to churches who do not believe healing is for today. It is why in many denomination, in many denominational churches, people are dying with insanity and disease because the very thing they need, healing, which was provided for them at the cross and that the communion services uh, represent is negated by half. That is one half is rejected in unbelief and doctrinal positioning while still being celebrated in the actual communion service. Here is how it works. The shed blood, the shed blood of Jesus was not for the healing of disease. The shed blood, his shed blood was for the forgiveness of sins. Scripture is clear that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Matthew 26, 28 says, all, and almost all for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the sins, for the remission of sins. Hebrews 9.22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is, is no remission. So, when we come <clears throat> into communion and we take the cup, we acknowledge that what he did for us allows us to be able to repent 
and to have cleansing and forgiveness of all sin. First John 1, 7 through 10. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. All sin. Doesn't mean he remembers it. Doesn't mean he forgets. Doesn't mean it's, it's gone. Cleanses us from all sin. It's gone. It's like you never sinned ever because it's Jesus' righteousness cleanses you from all sin. All. As long as we repent, we ask forgiveness and it's, and it's like it never happened. Right? As far as from the east as from the west. So as he cleanses from all unrighteousness. Okay. Okay. So if, here we go. If, I'm sorry, I just was telling you. Okay, I'm still in First John uh, 1, 7 through 10. Now that was just verse 7. This is verse 8. If we... If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. However, the broken bread represents the stripes that were laid on Jesus. That were laid on Jesus represents the freedom from the curse. The curse is all manner of disease in Deuteronomy 28. First Peter 2, 24, who has in his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sins shed to live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed when his broken body is broken for your healing. His broken body is broken for my healing. By his stripes we were healed. When we do not believe healing is for today and teach that it's not and then Take the bread of communion, which represents the freedom from the curse, but deny the freedom is for today. We have brought a curse into our lives. We are cursed with a curse, which is the disease we now say that we cannot heal from it because yet we celebrate the sacrament providing for that healing there's something theologically wrong with this picture. This happens because we negate one half of what Christ did on the cross. In partaking of the bread, we, in partaking of the bread, we curse ourselves in our own ignorance, ignorance and apostasy for these reasons. And many of us are weak and sick and die premature deaths because we are cursed with the curse and have brought on our own selves because of unbelief. This is a difficult teaching. Those are those who are not correctly discerning the body of Christ personally and what the work he did on the cross represents. Open the door for sickness and disease and for premature death. It is a spiritual block to healing. healing. So, I am going to lead us in healing communion. And so, we're, I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and, and I'm going to, but I want you to first take the time right now to walk in to let God walk your heart through some forgiveness 
Father, I thank you for this opportunity to see the truth and to know that we haven't even understood that some of us are dying with cancer, some of us are dying with disease in our family trees, that that we're just dying because we have taken communion unworthily and we have cursed ourselves with a curse and we haven't believed in the healing in the atonement on the cross and forgive us father for for our unbelief and forgive us for stopping for not listening to the truth forgive us for our the a rebellion in our hearts. Forgive us for taking communion unworthily all those years from 17 years, however many years, 18 years, taking it unworthily and cursing, opening the door to sickness and disease and not walking in fellowship and hating my brother in my heart, saying I love God, and yet I hated my brother in my heart. The love of God was not in me. Forgive me, Father, for walking in unforgiveness. Forgive me, God, for walking in unbelief. Forgive me, God, for not even seeing, not even for listening, for going to churches who don't even believe in the sacrament of healing, who go to the churches who don't believe in the gifts of healing, who don't believe in in that healing is for today. Father, I pray for all those people that have listened and believed the lie of the enemy that you would show them that I'm even a testimony to the truth that, that your healing is for today, that you still heal today. Those who believe, those who receive, when you, when you pray, ask and believe that you have received what you're asking for and you will receive what you want asked for. But when you stand, when you pray, forgive. Father, forgive us for walking in unforgiveness. Forgive us for taking communion, dishonoring you in a dishonoring way. And when we've drank communion unworthily and we've brought a curse of sickness and disease on our life where we're dying premature early deaths Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over every time that we've done that we plead the blood of Jesus and we ask for forgiveness to, to, and take away this curse, take away this sickness and disease, Father, we ask for your healing heart the healing heart of heaven to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and we, are, we repent we repent of the sin of unforgiveness we, pers- we repent for the sin of hatred of bitterness we repent for the sin of hating you or hating our brother in our heart and dying in sickness and disease but Lord you are reaching into your broken body of Christ you're reaching in and you are equipping me. You're equipping it right. You're teaching uh, your beautiful believers how to walk in victory and in your healing and in all the authority that we have that you've provided for us on the cross. So I thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for this time. I thank you, Father, for your healing, for the healing heart of heaven. Thank you, God that by your stripes we were healed and we believe and we'll receive in jesus name amen so hey there okay so matthew well, i'm taking healing communion just make sure take the time Prepare your heart for the Lord if you have it. 
of receiving God's healing and his forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins is by the blood and the healing, the broken, his broken body was for your broken body, was to heal your broken bone, his broken body. By, by his stripes, you were healed. It's a finished work. His broken body was broken for your broken body, for your healing. And in Jesus' name. So, Matthew 26, 26 through 30. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. And he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I give you a minute to take the time to do that. Get a cracker if you don't have one, and we're blessing it. It doesn't have to be perfect, what they. What they said does it, but God will honor it and He will receive it and He will bless it and um, He will bless the communion. And as long as we're doing it with and honorably before Him, right? So, whatever you're taking, your bread. Be a cracker with lemon. Okay, so each of you now, verse 27, then Matthew 26 through 30, and he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he gave it to them. And he said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. So, Father, I thank you for the blood. I thank you in, the, in your broken body. I thank you for communion. I thank you for the sacrament of healing. I thank you that, that by your stripes we are healed and we will receive your healing in our bodies now, even as this, as we took this cup and this bread. We thank you, Father, for your healing. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, God, that you are breathing your life into the brokenness of ours, and that you are ed you were teaching us how to walk in victory. You are teaching us how to believe again. You're teaching us how to believe in miracles, signs, and wonders again. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father. I thank you for doing it right now. Thank you, Father. We love you. We love you. And we thank you for Jesus on the cross. We thank you for the blood and body of Christ and all his sacrifice in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. I love you. He loves you. Be blessed and healed. And Jesus' name.